So today we'll be taking a closer look on functions, an examinable type of question on functions. The focus will be on linear functions and quadratic functions and how you can answer questions like this. This question is from Eastern Cape, September 2019. I hope you guys like it. So let's get into it. So the question here says the diagram below shows the graph of fx is equal to x squared minus 7x minus 8 and gx is equal to mx plus c where p and r are your x-intercepts. So the focus of this is our p over here and our r over there. They also tell us that v is the x-intercept for g. So now that focus is over there. S is the turning point for F. So they are talking about this one over here. F and G intersect at the Y axis at Q, which means that over there, T is nine and 10. We have six questions. The first one was to write down the coordinates of Q. Okay, so let's start with that. Q is our Y intercept. We use FX to get our Y intercept. So the coordinate for our y-intercept, as you can see, is 0 and negative 8. Question 2. Determine the equation of G. Now, G is our straight line equation. And whenever you want to get your equation of a straight line, you need your gradient and you need your y-intercept. Q is the y-intercept for both the straight line and the parabola. Our C is already negative 8. To get our gradient, we use the gradient formula, which looks like this. Now, all we need is two points on that straight line for this to work. So we have the point of T and we have the point of Q. So we substitute those into our gradient formula. So we have our gradient to be 2. So all we just need to do is now substitute our m and our c into the gx formula. And that's it. Question 3 says write down the equation of f in the form of y is equals to a open bracket x plus p squared plus q. Now for us to answer this, if you want to change from the standard form to this form, which is a turning point form, there are two ways of doing this. So the first way is by completing the square. And this will be your answer. So next we substitute it into our original equation and it's going to look like this. The format says our a stays the same, so this is 1 and your x is 7 over 2 while your q is 81 over 4 which will give you the same answer. So question four says, hence or otherwise, determine the coordinate of S, which is the turning point of F. Now S is our turning point, and since the previous question we already did our turning point form, those values in which we got is our turning point. So all we just need to do is use those values, which are, and that's it. So question five says, determine the coordinate of point W on F, such that the gradient of T and W is one. Now to understand this particular question is that if you look closely at this, there is no W. Another thing we were told about this W is that it is on F, meaning that it's on our parabola. So somewhere around this parabola, your W is there. So two things that we have from this information. The first thing we do is try to use the gradient. The concept of gradient, like we said, is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. W, which has a coordinate of, let's say, x and y. T, which we're told has a coordinate of 9 and 10. We can use the gradient formula over here to help us get that. So all we just do is substitute. And our gradient, we're told whether it was 1. So we simplify this. Because it's also on our parabola, which is f, we can substitute x and y into our parabola as well. 
So now from here, we'll notice that we have two equations. The first equation being our straight line and the second equation being our parabola. Now when you have two unknowns and you have two equations, the best course of action is simultaneous equation. So I am going to do simultaneous equation to try to answer this. So we would have two answers, 9 and 10, and negative 1 and 0. So since our answer can't be 9 and 10, because that is t, w has to be negative 1 and 0. So with 6, it says determine the value for x for which fx times gx is less than 0. Now to be able to answer this question, one thing you need to put at the back of your mind is the concept that anything less than 0 is negative, and anything greater than 0 is positive. And also another very important thing to also put at the back of your mind is that the concept of fx and gx do represent y. So whenever you have fx, they're talking about the y of the graph function of f. And whenever they're talking about g, they're talking about the y of the graph function of g. So we are saying that if you multiply the y of f and the y of g, you end up with a negative value. Now, we will use a little bit of basic arithmetic to answer this. So my reasoning is this. If this represents negative, we are saying that for us to be able to multiply two numbers and get a negative value, it means that one of my graph needs to be positive and the other needs to be negative. Or if this fx is negative and gx is positive, you will still get a negative value. Anytime your graph is above the x line, the graph is positive. Anytime your graph is below the x line, the graph is negative. We need to look at our graph and look for where one of the graph is positive and the other is negative simultaneously. And that will help us get our answer. The part you see shaded on your graph are the part in which one of the graph is positive and the other is simultaneously negative. For the first part we see over here, we notice that it is from negative infinity until it gets to p. So what we need to find out is what is the value of p over here. And since p is an x-intercept, we find the x-intercept for our parabola. So this is negative 1 and r is 8. So the first answer we're going to get is from negative infinity up to negative 1. So we can write it in this format. We know that our graph here stops at 8, but we need to know where it starts from. And this is the x-intercept for your straight line equation. So this one here is 4. The answer for this particular graph would be from... The first part is this one over here, while the second part is that one over there. And that's it. If you have any questions regarding function, there is a playlist on functions which specifically talks about parabolas, quadratic functions, talks about linear functions, the, the type of questions that we just did. You can go through it and it's definitely going to give you a better understanding. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.